Scorpio, it's me, Stormy, and here's your 2018 yearly horoscope. So, Scorp, before we jump in, want to let you know the 2018 birthday appointments are up and available right now. It's my once a year gift to you, so click in the description box down below. Book your birthday appointment by your sun sign, okay? And I look forward to seeing you in those appointments. Grab them before they are gone, though. Scorpio, as we kick off this year, we're coming into 2018. You are on fleek right? You've got Jupiter in your sign, moved into your sign in October, is going to be in your sign all the way until November this year before it moves on to your second house into Sagittarius. So Jupiter providing abundance, opportunity, wisdom, blessings, really providing that and also really surrounding you in some protective energy as well, which is really beautiful. But make no mistake, all the abundance that he is bringing, it is also about your personal growth, your development, and your expansion this year. And one of the ways that I really think that Jupiter is going to help you use this energy to expand is going to be in your relationship zones. And that's because Uranus, our planet of freedom, breaking traditions, breaking structures, innovation, getting you out of a rut, surprise, okay? He's going to be going into the sign of Taurus, which is your opposite sign. So your relationships could get like va -voom. You could have relationships, which is, this is not just romantic relationships. This is personal relationships of many varieties, anything one-on-one, -on -one, romance, friendships, business, anything you consciously choose to enter in terms of a contract or an opportunity. These could be coming to the table because that's how Uranus works. He brings this electric surprise to the table. And for you in this relationship zone, I'm going to tell you, if you're in a relationship and you've been kind of feeling stifled or you've been feeling like, oh, I just don't have the freedom I need here. I'm not, I love this person. I want to be with this person. I want to be in this relationship, but I just feel like I need more freedom. Uranus may help you see how to be innovative in this relationship, bring more freedom to the table so that everybody is vital and thriving, right? At the same time, I think that this energy, because Uranus is so sudden that it awakens the heart space. It awakens the head space because Uranus does this. He's very tingly, right? And you could be thinking of new ways and feeling forth new ways to be in these relationships. It's just like you're like, yes, I think we should commit. You know, even the most stubborn energy when Uranus comes around gets a rethought to it. So whatever's happening in your relationships, there could just be a little bit of a revival happen. Now, the thing that Uranus is also pretty infamous for is bringing sudden endings and sudden beginnings, okay? So you could have a relationship, you could have a business opportunity, walk into your life like out of nowhere, right? And you're like, what? And it's around, you have the opportunity to work with this energy for two months and then it's gone, right? Or... You could have been doing something in some kind of relationship, business relationship or something like that, and all of a sudden that relationship is gone. Now, what I think is the protection you have here is with Jupiter in your sign, it'll help you to expand your thinking to understand that it is all a part of the greater plan. But this is about you experiencing, right? This is challenging and thrilling and fun and innovative and electric and pushing you out in a social way to engage in different relationships. And that's what it's about. You've got to bring new energy into yourself and to your relationships as well. Now that energy for Uranus is going to be happening from May 15th until November 6th. Uranus will be in Taurus, but then Uranus is going to retrograde in Aries and slide backwards. And he's going to be there all the way until 2019. Then 2019 moving forward, we get the, the real deal of Uranus and Taurus. It's going to stay for quite some time. But this stop that we get from May to November, this is just a little taste test of what we're going to be getting. So pay attention to what's happening in these energies. Now we cannot forget that we also had Saturn move on into Capricorn, right? <laughs> and December. Yeah, nobody forgot, right? So Saturn in Capricorn for you is happening in this third house space, opening up communication for you, really helping you get mastery and crystallizing lessons about communication, about communication, about thinking, things with siblings, things with neighbors, things with writing, all of these things in the mental pattern, the details of your life, right? These are the things that are going to come up for your evaluation and you're going to work on all year long. Now, the beautiful energy about Saturn is one, no matter how tough this seems, remember all of the planets are working towards your greatest good. It is about you surrendering and letting go to work with them, not against them, which is easier said than done when you're a human, right? <laughs> so with Saturn helping you here, you may find that you're having to 
really look at how you are communicating with people. I think you are in a position, Scorpio, where you're having to look at the mind-body conversation. What's happening up here? right? Like what's happening in your head? For my Scorpios who may be suffering with any kind of brain injury, this could be a time where Saturn's actually helping you learn to think around the injury that you have or learning to think with the injury that you have, right? These could definitely be things where Saturn is trying to help you see how to get this communication out there. Now, another reason I think that this communication piece is so strong for you right now is if we're going to change in relationships, you've got to be able to communicate. You've got to be able to make business savvy um, decisions. And, and this energy of the third house is very business savvy energy. Maybe it's a time where you're getting it together. You're finally putting that book together. And even if it takes you the next three honking years, you want to go ahead and start working on that. But Saturn is here to be helpful. And with Pluto up there as well, this is going to be a section of your life that over the next three years is going to come under very significant, significant change. This could be a time where you're redoing your website. Anything communication related, including with siblings and neighbors, you're definitely going to be redoing it. Now, here's the other tie I see. Mars, who is one of your ruling planets, is going to be taking a retrograde from June all the way until August, okay? Now, in this time, this is in your fourth house zone, so this could be a time where your, your domestic zone is somehow under conflict or stress, and maybe you're having to communicate with neighbors to get a little bit more help. Maybe you're moving and you're having to communicate with new neighbors and things like that. All of these new relationships will be forming, but with that Mars retrograde from June 26th until August 27th, something in your home family real estate property zone is definitely going to be under re-evaluation because that's what a retrograde is. It's re, we re, we re-look at, reinvent. And with uh, Mars, it's about desire. It's about action. It's about energy. Where are you placing your action? Where are you placing your energy? You're going to have to relook at those things. Now, I highly suggest that when Mars is retrograde, that you don't take on any elective procedures if you can avoid it because Mars rules over war-like things and cutting is definitely considered war. So if you can avoid doing that, that's great. But that doesn't mean that someone in your house doesn't break an arm, doesn't break a leg, doesn't have to have a surgery, some Thing stressful could be coming to the home zone. And by stressful, I just mean it requires your extra work or attention. Maybe you're having to work through um, a stressful decision together. And let me tell you what, Scorpios, if you are co-parenting, maybe you guys are having to do something around your children because it's not just your home family property, right? It could be whatever you consider home, right? So keep these things in mind as you're thinking about this retrograde. What can you be re-looking at? Now, I also have some great news for your career this year, and thank goodness you'll be working on communication so you can get out there and really own this. We've got a set of eclipses that are going to be happening this year like we do every year. These ones, though, are very similar to 2017 in the fact that they are mostly in Leo and Aquarian energies. And this eclipse cycle that we are going to experience this year ties into the eclipse cycle that started in 2016. What were you working on in your career? What were you moving towards? How does it look today, right? Now, we've got a lunar eclipse as we start off the year, January 31st, and this is going to be bringing you some recognition in your career. And then as we get to August, right, because you want to watch these eclipses from the beginning of the year to the, to the end of the year. Then in August, we've got a solar eclipse in the same area of your chart. And this could be a promotion. This could be advancement. This could be coming up in your career in some way, shape, or form, which is beautiful because right behind that, Jupiter goes into Sagittarius. It's comfortable here. It rules this sign. This is your second house of income. So way to be comfy and cozy and in control and be able to accept the blessings that Jupiter is trying to bring to your earned income sector, to your value sector, right? To your material possession sector. So it's definitely going to be a time through the eclipses in the end of the year where I think you really get to watch yourself move in new relationships, have new opportunities, opportunities for abundance come to the table, all while spending your summertime really digging and delving into whatever's happening around your housing and home life situation.
All right, Scorpio, let's jump in and break this year, I can't even believe I'm saying year, down by date. So right at the beginning of the year, January 31st, we've got a total, and it's important to understand that it's a total lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Leo. This hits your 10th house space. Now, why is it important that it's total or partial? We'll be talking about that this year because a total tells me that as these energies get blotted out, your emotions are gonna get a reset. Right? This is the moon. We're dealing with emotional energy. So you're going to get a reset here. And this is all the better for you in your career. You may see some things where you're like, nope, this doesn't work for me anymore. I need to cut this off because the lunar eclipse is still the full moon. And it says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. Right? So there could be adjustments around the career zone here. And some of this could also be maybe you're getting ready to retire. Right? How great would that be? Woot woot. I celebrate for you. February 15th, we've got a solar eclipse. This is happening in Aquarius. So this is in your fourth house zone. So new beginnings here in February around your housing situation. This can last six months to a year. So perhaps what's happening, maybe this is the move. Maybe you're welcoming a new child. Maybe you have gotten married and now you're starting a household together in a different way. Whatever it is, home, family, real estate, property gets new beginnings here at this solar eclipse because the solar eclipse is the new moon at this time, right? And we plant those seeds of intention, welcome new beginnings, even though we don't know what they're gonna look like, we just say, yes, I'm willing to participate. And then we enjoy the adventure along the way. When we get to May 15th, we have Uranus making that move into the sign of Taurus. So into your seventh house zone over here, it'll be here creating these thrills and this excitement and this new and this different all the way until November 6th. We'll slip back into Aries in a retrograde fashion. And then in 2019, we'll come forward and we get a good stint of Uranus in Taurus. So we'll really watch those changes happen as well. Now this could also be, I just was thinking about this, Finances and relationships as well could be getting a revision for you at this time. June 26th to August 27th, we've got that Mars retrograde. It is retrograding in Aquarius as well. So re-looking at that domestic zone, really re-looking at actions, energies, and all of those things to see what are you doing and what are your desires? You know, you may have had these ideals from your past over here and reality has shown you a brand new picture and you've got to reset those desires as well. July 13th, we've got a partial solar eclipse, and this one is in the sign of Cancer. I love this for you. This is the ninth house space. This gives you an opportunity to expand your mind, right? To step out on some faith. I don't know if this is gonna work out, but I'm gonna try it a different way. Also gives you an opportunity to have some kind of new beginning around higher education, certifications, licensing, um, foreign travel, things like that. Legal things could fall into here as well, and this could be some really good news for you as well. My students, this is a delicious energy for you to delve into, so make sure you're getting it, okay? July 27th, I got another total lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Aquarius, so your fourth house, you're gonna have a reset to those emotions. Thank goodness, right? But this could also be the peak of whatever's happening during this Mars retrograde, whatever that situation is, whether it be stressful, whether it be just changing and different, this could be the peak of that energy at this eclipse as well. Now, on August 11th, we've got a partial solar eclipse in Leo. So again, this is that space where you could really be getting some yum-yum around your career. Plant those seeds for new beginning. This could be a brand new start for you around career or soul level calling, right? October 5th through November 16th, Venus is also going to retrograde, okay? Now, <clears throat> when Venus retrogrades, relationships and finances get tight. They can, they come under pressure, they come under to revision, all of those things. Now, it's going to start out retrograding in your sign. Okay, so you may be rethinking about you in relationships. Maybe you said, I am never getting married, and you're like, I kind of feel like I want to get married, right? Maybe you're looking at your behavior, your actions with your money, your finances, inside of relationships, your relationship with you, you are just getting a full-scale revision. I also think that because it's Venus, you may be asking the questions, am I caring for myself? Am I valuing myself? Am I putting myself and my needs first so that I can be abundant out there in my life? Then this Venus retrograde is going to slip back because it's retrograde, so it's moving backwards into Libra. So into your 12th house space, and this is a quiet personal space. You may be reflecting on um, fear and letting things go, really working on some closure, things like that. You could be working on things that are behind the scenes, definitely some issues that maybe you were bringing to the table in terms of beliefs around money and finance um, and relationships so that you can be prepared as Venus gets to November 
and comes direct to let those things go. Now, as we end the year, we get to November um, 8th, and Jupiter's gonna make this move into Sagittarius. How beautiful, lighting up some abundance, some opportunity for you around your income, your finances, your value, your material possessions. So it's gonna be a rocking year, is what I'm saying. It's gonna be a rocking year, we're gonna grow, we're gonna have new Saturn energy, and we have a chance to lean into, not away from, lean into all of it, so that we can grow, expand, change, and not suffer as we're going, right? All right, Scorpios, I love you guys so much. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to walking through every week and every month with you in 2018. And of course, seeing you in the 2018 birthday appointments. Click in the description box and snag yours. Bye, guys.